closing the borders is the wrong solution to the problem because it simply doesn't work. It might seem like a persuasive solution because you can literally show that you are doing something as a politician. But there's no way to control every single stretch of border. And when that is the case, criminals will always be able to find other ways around the controls. This is, of course, why the Union has developed a stronger and a stronger effort in police cooperation. The question is, are we doing enough? It is impossible for 27 individual countries to maintain law and order in uh, Europe. We must have a European cooperation. And in this respect, the report called for a European public prosecutor. I am still convinced that some kind of organism like that is necessary. There must be more cooperation between the European authorities. From everyday life, I, last year I introduced an amendment in the European budget saying that part of the budget should be used to combat Transborder criminality. Europe could have a value added in uh, improving the standards of the police forces of our neighbouring or whoever key partners they happen to be because the security of the EU, as the organised crime threat assessment shows, doesn't start at Europe's borders, but it's, uh, it starts, I mean, the, the world, the crime market is the world market. I mean, there's no European crime, there's a world crime that acts in Europe. So, the interaction with the rest of the world is probably as important as the development of the mechanisms of cooperation between our member states and the centralized um, agencies. Mobile organized criminal groups and networks are, are, are really mobile inside the Union and they are very swift and they are very easy to adapt to legislation and to habits by the law enforcement. We also see that that we have a lot of perpetrators which are actually with no value for the organization because the real valuable people, they will keep hiding. And I think that we need to shift from reactive policing to more intelligence-led policing. Um, I think that, 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 that the trust can be regained and I think that the Schengen system uh, is actually a vital tool to this, but I also think, to be quite honest, that it's a bit outdated. If you look at the vast amount of international crime that is hitting Europe in terms of drugs pouring into our countries, illegal immigrants pouring in, counterfeit goods pouring in, crime on the internet, which is growing all the time, we all see it every day on the internet, money laundering and so on. You're doing a good job, but it's overwhelming you. Uh, and, and I don't think, as Europol is set up, I mean, it's possible, and therefore, um, I think the answer is an FBI. And it's really the national politicians in London, and maybe in Copenhagen and Berlin, who are saying, oh no, we're very afraid of this. But the public says, there's a problem, Fix it, please. And they expect us to do it. ENISA would have Europol, then a cybercrime center, then the NATO sec cybersecurity center in Tallinn, which of course is not an institutional body, but which we should cooperate more closely with. So and it would be interesting just to hear maybe if the commission can already say what they would consider from this idea or how they would think that and how Europol would perceive that idea. Just in a nutshell, again, instead of having something separate, it would be integrated into Europol uh, with the necessary budgetary means to enforce uh, the implementation and to make it workable because it doesn't make sense to have too many centers which have to coordinate among each other but have concentrated knowledge at one place. Organized crime case that is being solved in one or two countries and yet we don't always see that in terms of you know being European news. Very often it is still perceived as a national news. Our wonderful national police crack this um, even though they might have just cracked this as part of the case. But we certainly need to go much further in terms of creating a sort of European awareness, in terms of um, creating a European political discourse, a European political debate with the citizens in terms of outlining, of course, the challenges. You, you do need to build a European political community and, and go much, much further. Those two things need to go hand in hand. In my view, the Parliament definitely needs to step in here and come up with some ideas about how, yes indeed, as, as we have put down in today's agenda, how we can mitigate some of the bad effects of free movement, and I'll go into how we might do that, uh, while preserving it. You know, there's, there's something called in economics the tragedy of commons, and that is when it's everyone's, everyone can use something, 
but it's no one's job to look after it. That is a sort of eminent tragedy also in the Euro crisis when German and Greek debt was, the same, was rated the same by the international markets. Everyone thought that would go on forever. That is a blissful state of innocence. 